Yeah. My family has a gene defect because we like ice cream so much. <laughs> a couple of lengths ago, I gave up ice cream for Lent. And, uh, we had a couple of half gallons in the, in the freezer that were about three quarters full. And so it got to be the night before Lent, and I thought, geez, you know, I'll never get through Lent with these things in the, in the freezer, so <laughs> I'll throw them out. And said, no, hell, I'll just put them in a the bowl, and I'll eat what I want, and then I'll throw out the rest. So I put these two together, so I had one and a half, a half gallons of ice cream, and I ate the whole damn thing. <laughs> now, this last Lent, I planned ahead so that I started eating the ice cream up like I believe ahead of time. But I still, on the last day, I still had a half a gallon left, which I ate. I've been married twice, and uh, shortly after I married my, uh, my present wife, uh, my older son, my younger son, and uh, was living with us. We were just out in L.A. He was uh, just starting a job out there. And then my, my younger daughter came down from the University of California to visit us. And uh, it was on a Saturday morning, and she went into the freezer and see if we had any ice cream. She said, oh, Judy, my wife, you don't have any ice cream. Judy said, oh, yeah, I bought a half gallon last night. <laughs> and uh, she says, there's nothing here. I said, Judy, we're looking. I know it was in here. So at that time, my son Patrick came in and heard him talking. He said, oh, yeah, you know. He said, Judy, I ate all that last night. We ate a So it's a, it's a family defect. <laughs> Alan and I were test pilots out of Edwards together, and so I knew him. And uh, he got in this test on our program after I did. And, and uh, my, I was talking to my mother and dad on the telephone. My mother said, oh, Mrs. Warden was over here the other night. He was saying, she was saying that Sonny's going to be become an astronaut uh, too. I said, who? She said, Sonny, Sonny Ward. Sonny. Sonny. No kidding. So <laughs> anyway, he shows up down in Houston. And he, he's out at the center and he walks down the street. Hey, Sonny. Rings <laughs> like that. He just kept going. Up. Sonny. Sonny, damn it, turn around. <laughs> You're telling me uh, you used to live uh, in Boston. Yeah, well, I didn't live there. I might just as well have. <laughs> uh, I worked with the MIT guys. Oh, that's right. Oh, okay. Guidance and Navigation System oh, for good. a while. Yeah. A bunch of bright guys who were. I used to I used to stay in a hotel quite <laughs> quite close to Fenway Park a lot. These kids would come out, and I'm, I, especially on weekends. They'd, they'd be all be out there, and, and I was young and handsome and all that kind of stuff. And so, oh, mister, can we have your autograph? They'd say, you know, I'm not a baseball player. Oh, yes, you are. We know you are. <laughs> before we flew, before we launched, a lot of the doctors said we are going to die when we got back because we are going to be sitting up in the space and everybody else see that when you're up in space, your heart deconditions. And so all the Mercury guys landed horizontal. And when they were in oh, the water, their back was like this. Was it on purpose? And the Gemini floated like this. So they were saying, well, we couldn't get the blood from our heart to our head. So we have to put our head between our legs. There's no way you can do that. <laughs> so uh, anyway, after we hit, we checked the water. And I said, Dad, how do you feel? He said, I feel great. How do you feel? I said, I feel great too. I guess we're not going to die after all. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we talked about. <laughs> then he threw up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> he had a weak stomach. Uh, green I admit being ignorant about the specific role, my specific role in NASA management. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. If he, uh, would I share some insight with respect to the crew selection process? <laughs> Uh, the crews were selected by Deke Slayton and uh, uh, were presented and announced without any knowledge I had whatsoever. And I had a lot of difficulty with some of those uh, crew selections. And then finally, uh, it got to the point I just decided that that was enough of that and I left the program. Uh, this is as a, pro as a spacecraft program manager. Let's see what else we've got here. 
So did you consult with you at all about what the program no, he never, was going? never mentioned the word to me, and I don't think that was his prerogative totally. Huh. Uh, I think that was a screw up on the part of NASA management to have crews selected by one guy like that without any regard to the other people who were concerned with the, with the missions. But that, that's the way they did it, and I didn't like it. What are my thoughts about trying to land a person on Mars and the moon again? I'm not sure that the American people have the courage to do that again. And uh, I hate to say that, but uh, today uh, all we want to do is blame other people for things, uh, sue each other for insignificant trivia things, and uh, I'm not sure that we've got the guts to do it again. My personal feeling, I hate to say that, but that's the way. Oh, yeah. Well, Ed and I knew each other very well. Went to school together, went to test pilot school together, and we had a lot of fun times. Let's see, which is a good one? Oh, I'll tell you a good one. On um, the day that Gemini 3 launched, Ed and I were down at the Cape for the launch. In those days, the uh, Mission Control Center was at the Cape. The first time it moved to Houston was for Gemini 4. Anyway, we were down there, and the flight got it delayed. But anyway, we, we finally left. But before we left, we kept getting these phone calls from the uh, NASA manager at um, the McDonald plant in St. Louis because we were supposed to do an altitude chamber test the next day. Well, by the time we flew up there, uh, with through bad weather and a few other things, we got to St. Louis very, very, very late. So we went over to the hotel to get a room, and the only room left was the bridal suite. So uh, we we took it. We needed to get to bed. It was quite late, early in the morning, I guess. So anyway, we got up to the we get up to the bridal suite, and here was this this uh, pair of twin beds pushed together with a great big uh, pink heart as a headboard and all that. And Ed said to me, "If you think I'm going to sleep in that bed with you, you're nuts." So he grabbed the whole of the one of the twin beds and was going to pull it apart and as he gave it a big tug it turned out it was fastened to the big pink heart-shaped headboard and it broke it right in half. <laughs> and so we said, well, we can't put it back together, let's go to bed. So we did. <laughs> so I, I, we had a lot of great times together. He was, uh, I, could, I could tell what he was going to do before he ever did it and he could do the same with me. He gave it a big what were the top two or three most memorable or important decisions I made as a pilot program manager? Well, every flight was uh, was exciting uh, to get off. To, <laughs> I got off the great start. Apollo 12 was struck by lightning <laughs> twice in the first 30 seconds of flight or so, and, and it dumped all the stuff, and I had to make the decision whether we should go on to the moon or not. And that when we got everything started back up, I checked with uh, all my um, supporting crew and uh, came to the conclusion we ought to go ahead and try it. So we did, and, and so we were successful. Um, there was an issue like that on every flight. Apollo 13 was the next one. Of course, getting them home safely was a major event. 14, 15, 16, all had, all had major problems. Um, the next question, what would have been his reaction, personal or, ofi or official, if Alan Shepard had landed in Terry's without the landing radar? It says here, the landing radar didn't come on when it was expected. Yeah, there, there's a, a lot of, it says here that the landing radar came on later and Shepard would have landed without it and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, I doubt that seriously. And it says here that... Uh, and Ed Mitchell asked Shepard what he would have done, and Shepard's answer was, you'll never know. And since Al's dead, I guess we, none of us will ever know. <laughs> but I, I doubt seriously if we would have gone on uh, without any radar at all. And there were rules uh, that we did before the flight. I made a...